Great relationships don't just happen, they're designed. But how do you get the love you really want when you haven't had the models and examples you needed? We've learned the hard way that talking about stuff can change everything, but it doesn't come naturally, and that's normal. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the ups and downs of creating a custom-built love. We'll get personal and talk about what's worked for us, hear from Jolie about what the research can teach us about love, and answer listener questions. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. Hey, everybody. So today we're going to talk about a subject that isn't really terribly fun to think about, but I think something we've all had to deal with at one point or another. I know I have. Um, and that is how to cool your jets when a, when a lovership, when a partnership, when a when someone's just either not that into you or they're just not available. How do you take a chill? It's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, I think, I mean, this starts coming up for us all, usually, you know, when we're young. Yeah, right. Um, and this can even start, I, I remember, yeah, I remember this coming up for at, at the beginning, just in friendships. Like, right, yeah. I wanted the I attention want of someone, I want to be your friend. with that person, and, and oh, they're not available. They're not available for that friendship for whatever reason. Yep. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is just a human thing. Um, but... In the context of consensual non-monogamy, I think that um, an outsider's perspective that I'm presented pretty frequently is that um, if you're open, you're open. And so, you know, <laughs> so you can kind of have anybody you want who's oh, in that the... pool of people. <laughs> I, yeah, the, the any. Any, not, not many, right. not any. Yeah. No, but I mean, it's also the specificity of... I, not everyone will have the bandwidth to have another partner. Yeah, not everybody right. is going to be at the right time or not everybody's attracted to every, you know, I mean, realistically, That's just, sometimes people just aren't that into you, but sometimes you really do feel something and you do. And, and you know that the other person does too. There's a mutual pull connection there. Um, and I think but, that, I mean, this happened to us in a weird way at the beginning. Yeah. I felt the intense, the full intensity and I showed up with it and I was like, here it is. And from from many years later, I can easily see where you had actually quite a bit of time where even though you felt yes. intensely about me, there were really there was a good solid eighteen months to two years <laughs> where yeah, you time. might have said, you know what, though, I've reconsidered and monogamy's the right choice for me. Yeah. And this is the way I'm gonna go. And then we would have had a whole other thing to deal with. Right. And we would have. And so that isn't the road we went down. But I remember being very aware that that was a possibility, that that was a possibility and having to temper some of my feelings or decide if I wasn't going to temper them, that I was going to deal with the ramifications of having great big feelings for someone who couldn't necessarily return them in action and was going to need to break away from me in some way. And it sounds like that's the the question that you were presented with that we've that we've been given is uh, so how do you temper it? You just said you had to temper your yeah. your feelings. What does that mean? Okay, I think context matters a lot mm -hmm. in this. Context matters a ton because um, so you and I we have known each other my entire life. We um, we lived at the time down the street from each other, um, and then we lived together. Um, but we lived down the street. Um, our families were already very woven together, both yep. the families that we had made with our children, but also my family of origin was tied to your family going back another whole generation. Right. So the idea of taking a full wholesale, like the, Just... the, the advice that's given so often is, okay, clean break. <laughs> Don't yep. see that person. That wasn't going to be possible for us. Um, another, uh, we also started a business together. So one of us would have had to leave it if we'd mm -hmm. realized. Yeah. Um, so context matters. If you, you might, maybe you have a colleague or someone who wasn't a colleague, but is now and, oh goodness, there are just so many contexts. There are so many contexts. Where you might not be and... able to get a clean break. So I don't want to take the easy way out and say, just go no contact. Cause what if you can't? What if you can't? And um, I think it's an important question that, that I immediately had looking at this is, um, 
So how do you how do you cool your your huts? Okay. What do you mean? What's your actual goal? Do you, what kind of relationship do you want to have with this person? Mm. Like what what would be acceptable to you and what um, and what are your desires? Because okay, so I hear someone who has particular a particular desired outcome for the relationship with this person and they're saying that that particular outcome isn't available. Okay, what other outcomes would be okay for the two of you? Th so this and is that's fascinating. Like th b you're always co-creating yeah. a reality. So one of the things I wanted from you was a much closer friendship. Mm -hmm. And I could have lived without the physical part. I would have been maybe a little pissy and definitely a masturbatory fiend. <laughs> that's a different thing altogether. I, I absolutely could have. I, that's a I, you thing. That's, exactly. <laughs> I, uh, but I, I wanted to be closer friends to you. Yeah. And I could envision that future. I could envision quite a few futures mm -hmm. for us. However, um, I can also remember times when the future that I envisioned it was so it it was so focused on like I want this person as a partner, um, that once I couldn't have that, there like I there I couldn't really imagine any other future because in truth I didn't want another future want I wanted that future. one mm -hmm. and I didn't want another one um, and I've had some people break off cleanly with me for that same yeah. reason because I'm like well I'm only available for this. I'm, I, that, that, this is all I've got. Um, you know, I, I only want platonic friendship or I only am looking for someone who is really casual right now. Um, because I, I just don't have the band. I, I do not yeah. have any more time on my calendar. And, so, and that's what I'm, I'm thinking. So, so the clean break, that's, that's one possible response. If you find that your, 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 um, your two sets of goals are just, just incompatible. Yeah. Like there is no overlap, um, then that, you know, if possible, that, that sounds like a, a good response, but then all the other ones are, well, what, what overlap can we have? Do we have, where can we, um, work on a relationship that works for both of us? Right. So, okay. Let's, let's say that this is like two paths. One is, um, I'm going to deal with this, the, the, the feeling of um, my thwarted hopes and dreams for this relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deal with all of my very excited, um, sensual, sexual, romantic, whatever kind of attentions I wanted to point at this person. And the other path is like the first, so the first one, I'm going to just deal with the fact that all, none of that is going to happen. And I'm going to deal with it. This is my work. I'm going to take it on. And the other one is I can't have what I want can we mutually make something together that actually satisfies both of us? Mm -hmm. um, and I want to sort that out because these are two very distinct ways of, of dealing with situa a situation that might start off looking, you know, one way, like, like it's, it's just one problem, but yeah. right away I can see how it breaks off into multiple avenues. So these first two ways, let's talk first, then you just established that, you might be able to create something else that works with this person. Right. But if you're dealing with um, unrequited love. Yeah. I, that is, I don't want to minimize that. Who could that. speak more clearly to unrequited love than you, my darling? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to minimize it because there, then there's, so all of those things that we were just saying very much come from a sort of, um, well, they come from one part of me. Then there's the other part that's just got that yearning, yearning. that, that, and, and what do you do with that? Oh. That's sort of the underlying question that I see. There's a lot of stuff to talk about, but like the thing that I know I would want, like somebody help me resolve this is like, I want, and I can't get. Yeah. So you've been there. I feel every part of you right now, I'm like, oh, the vibration yep. Off yep. of you is high. Okay. So this is not, this is. If at any point during this episode, it sounds like I'm simplifying this. Yeah, the feeling isn't simple. The feeling isn't going to just go it's away because quiet, you want it to. Unrequited mild. love is written about and sung about throughout the ages for a reason. It is, it's like being swept off your feet by a phantom. 
yeah. by, not, by something that's not there, by someone you have imagined into being. Because in fact, this other person isn't doing the sweeping. But your imagination is incredibly powerful. Your capacity to create an imaginal version of this person right. who yeah. is everything that you want to need and oh, all of that, right? That that imagination can sweep you off your feet. So now you're in both the high of being of falling in love or whatever or lust or whatever and simultaneously completely without barren of that. Just just it's nowhere. Yes. That's that is rough. That is rough. And the when I think back to you in this phase, I think back to a time in our friendship before there was romance. Um, and I remember you longing for someone mm -hmm. and I remember you always looking like you had simultaneously sucked on a lemon mm -hmm. and also maybe needed to punch somebody. There was so much yeah. pain mm -hmm. in your, in your expression, in, and tightness that like I, we were we were friends, relatively close friends. I didn't know exactly what was going on. I maybe suspected a little bit, but you looked like you were in pain. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, I want to invite Grace in for the, the mm. that pain that yes. you're in, yep. while also not saying, "Oh well, it's just going to be painful." Suck it up. <laughs> yeah, because that's that's yeah. not at all the case, but. Um, the, um, the, the desire to have the pain stop by simply denying the fact that the feeling ever existed, I, I've never seen it really work very well. Yeah. Um, you, you were interested in this person and, and sort of longed for them long after you and I were together. Mm -hmm. There was still a lot of yeah. energy there. And I remember when, it, when it changed. Okay. I remember there there being this time when all of a sudden, I mean, you knew them, you still cared about them as a human, but you no longer longed for them. The pain seemed to fall away, and it was it was exact. It was it was as it like watching a spell clear, like you were free of something. And the thing that had changed, at least this is what I remember from your stories. The thing that changed is she became a whole person. Yeah. She no longer was just your imagination, yep. but like you really started to take in some of, oh, actually this part of her personality would drive me bonkers. This part of her life doesn't fit in mine. We have vastly different out desired outcomes for down the road. And you put it in perspective of like, yeah, this absolutely. whole person, not just as a person to potentially satisfy my desires, right? but right. as a whole person. Yeah. And after that, I remember you talking about her with this evenness mm -hmm. and you cared about her, you were friendly with her, but it was no longer a big deal. I understood more about the practicalities of what it would be to be as connected to her as I wanted to be. Yeah. And I hadn't, I hadn't been thinking about that before. I mean, now we can talk about projections and other things <laughs> um, about how, what I was seeing in her, but, but whatever it was, it was simplistic imaginary and it was like a crayon drawing of who of she this actually very was very real dynamic yeah. growing changing yep. individual okay it was a really good crayon drawing but yeah. just a crayon drawing <laughs> okay so how about this the feeling of unrequited love i think is very similar to the feeling that the in love feeling the that that very beginning um and I really like the, um, when I came to understand how much falling in love is really about projecting all of the things I wish I could claim about myself, mm -hmm. but I can't quite. <laughs> so golden shadow, all the qualities of me that I, I really want to believe they're true. All these, even capacities, actual capacities, these, um, you know, things that they can do, uh, items they could, like, just... Yeah, like what they can capabilities do, capabilities and, they have, um, all of yeah. that. I'll, very, very frequently, if we look at our uh, in love times, we notice that we have seen in an other, capital O, other. We've seen in an other 
these qualities that we deeply wanted to claim for ourselves. Right. But just couldn't for whatever reason. Just didn't. We just didn't grab it. Just didn't. That's really interesting to hear you say it that way. And we've talked about this before. So yeah, you you project those out there, the things that you don't want to claim for yourself. Then you try to claim that person for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So this happened with you and I. Um, I projected onto you intelligence, um, grown-upness, maturity, mm -hmm. um, calmness, steadiness, all these things that I have. Yeah. I do have, but it has taken me years to realize that I was, you have them too. And I could see them in you. But yeah, it, a lot of those early days of falling in love with you was falling in love with a version of me that I wanted to sort of consume and own and claim yep. on the outside. Yeah. So, whew. Yeah. So unrequited love can be a, a great impetus for reclaiming parts of you. So... This is this is not where I thought this was going to go because I was going to give just some strategies about distraction and such. But how about this? Write down every single thing you find compelling. attractive and compelling about this person. Write it all down. Make a list. If you're a list person, make it into a list. If you're a narrative person, make a narrative. Whatever it is, if record it into your voice recorder. Get it out of you. And then sit and look at that list because I promise you, those are things that are within you that you you can claim you're actually this is actually your unconscious trying to, like trying to make this visible to you this is how this is its tool it works with image it is trying to make visible to you what has to come into being that is amazing i didn't know this is where we were headed but there it is and it's and so so accurate from to my experience in you can we go further with your experience sure, in this can sure. I be more specific please do okay in the case that i'm talking about with you yeah the person had some capacity in a particular area that you had been diving into yeah. deeply you and had, I had immersed been, yourself in the nature world and i had like, been imagining it for decades already before i even got there yeah so for decades you had wanted to be a person a man of the woods a person uh -huh. of the woods a human of the woods a creature of the woods yep. someone who could disappear into the woods and become one with nature yeah and you started training and you were getting good at it you were becoming um, much more in tune with that aspect of you. But even better, yeah. there was a girl yep. who already embodied, who embodied so all much of things. that and had a natural capacity for yep. it. And she was beautiful and all of these things. What a wonderful way to project out what you desperately are, you, you want and are ready to claim, but not quite. So I... If if I had had someone give me that that idea, okay, write down everything you see that that you're attracted to, and now, um, now map them onto yourself and see how it fits and see what what what. And this is this is how I take this. What would I do to manifest those things in me? How could I change me? What actions could I take? And some to bring of those things to me. Some of it's just accepting. And some that of it's, it's just noticing true. that it's I mean, already there. Yeah. Literally, I thought I was stupid, and the the closer I got to you, and and realized that I really that the awakening that I was not stupid. I was quite right. Mm, for sure. But I could only see it outside of myself when yep. I that was it was just actually picking up a mantle. It was picking up a cloak and wrapping it around myself. Yeah. It wasn't, I didn't have to change anything. I was already bright. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to change anything. You just had to. I just had to be willing the to way acknowledge you that looked at yourself. just because I was raised to think that I was uh, fair to Midland is how my father would have put it. Um, didn't mean I was. Right. So there's an opportunity to learn an awful lot about yourself in this situation. Yeah. Physical attractiveness is actually another one that I have struggled with this hmm. way. Um, I'm like being able to, to own how I am attractive, which, you know, is everyone is. Yeah. <laughs> everyone is. Well, uh, and yeah, so I look out and, and I watch, whenever we watch anything with dancing in it, 
I am blown away and I feel like jealous and I, I want to be able to do that envious thing and I feel and, envious yeah. and I feel uh, feel all these these compulsions and I like because I want to dance. Yeah. You want it for you. I want but it, it for would be me. really easy. So that this is actually a, this was part of our early story. Yep. I would dance uh, near you. Yep. And you you did I'd had a sensation that you wanted to consume me. Yeah. That you wanted to consume me. Um and this is all this is why relationships for me are just like such fruitful psychological work yeah. because we didn't have to do a darn thing either one of us in those situations to 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 claim who we actually are yeah. other than recognize that the this desire that level that heightened level of having the hots for somebody of being in lust of being compelled by someone is information and it might be information about something you want to act on out there and you might go create that relationship and even if you could get that relationship I would still challenge you to claim uh -huh. those qualities yourself because yes. that's that's part of the gift of the relating. Yeah. They're they're going to be utter and as then as you get to know a person and you unpack it, you find out in fact you're quite different in that sameness. You and I yes. are both intelligent in extraordinarily Not the same different way. ways. Mm -hmm. Um, so first there was a desire I would I projected the idea of intelligence onto you. That meant that also let me disown it because, um, well, you were intelligent like in science and mathy stuff, right? And so I couldn't possibly have that. Yeah, there's this funny thing about oh no, we can't both have that. Right, you're so the I, one with that, and I'm once not. Once I reclaimed that and I said, okay, here's my here is my own intelligence without stripping it away from you because yep. you have yours. That's when we got to shift from. Um, the beginning stages of our individuation journey together into differentiating, continually differentiating. Oh, we're intelligent in different ways. You and I are incredibly different people. We think about oh, things yeah. very differently. Mm -hmm. We probably sound like we agree a lot here, but well, we disagree we... All, plenty, but moreover, we just think about things yeah, very I mean, differently. The things we agree about, we have gotten to in completely different paths. Right. Yeah. So if you can reclaim those qualities, and let's say that you do wind up getting to have either this relationship or another one, this the act of differentiating it then is like the next step of, right, the quality isn't just one thing. Intelligence, yeah. um, grace, beauty, these aren't one thing. They're, they're incredibly multifaceted things. Yeah. There's room for everybody, for every version. Um, before we as we as we wrap this up, I do want to talk a little bit about um, what happens when we're in this phase of like elevated, we're like aroused mm -hmm. all the time. Um, you know, some people long, I think, for a clean break because they just don't want to feel arousal. And that's that's a valid choice. If you do not want to feel the arousal of this, if you don't want to have to temper, if you don't want to have to deal with the way that feels, totally valid choice to limit your exposure to this yep. person, 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 <laughs> person. Um, and that might be physical exposure. That might be um, social media exposure to them. You know, like right. constantly consuming their social media might be a really bad idea. It might even mean needing to focus on other areas of your life in order like maybe you need to pull back from one friend group and put more energy into a different group or maybe you need to focus on a different hobby because that person is always at the mm -hmm. same spot where you do this to give yourself a break and some space to so, yeah. literally cool the embers but you can also choose to recycle that you could you could compost that arousal into something pretty good. Say more about that. So I love being in love. Like I, I just love it. You are a fan. I also love being in lust. Oh my God, I mm -hmm. love being in lust. Um, and I don't actually need the other person to return that for me to enjoy it. So being in that state of arousal for someone... And this actually happens to me more frequently 
Like, this far outnumbers the number of people I have actually dated or had sex with. The number of people who I have enjoyed longing for them. Okay. So, I think this comes to me because... Because I just, I really do. I, I love fantasy. I love exploring that energy. So for me, I take that, that level of arousal and turn it into fantasy. And I'll, I'll shift the context so that this, um, this person, this image, whatever it is, this arousal, I'll shift the context so it's no longer in day-to-day real life. Like, I'll take the, the person out of the setting in my imagination. I'll take them out of the setting we're actually in, you know, turn them into essentially a magical figure, and then let myself play. And that becomes wonderful, arousing fantasy. And I detach it from their, their, their real person, and, and it's they become essentially like a movie character. And does that keep you from fixating on the actual person by yeah. taking them out of the context so order, like that? In order to do that, I have to also, this is how it works for me, I have to also maintain my day-to-day relationship with that person and remember that they put on their pants one leg at a time and everybody goes to the bathroom. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like, right. It's, you know, that perspective helps me stay real about the fact that everybody would drive me nuts you know somebody else is going to squeeze the toothpaste tube wrong and that perspective lets me separate out like the real life person might be very intriguing but i can enjoy the fantasy of that without having the thing without actually well in the relationship for me i I mean honestly i thought that's where we were going at the beginning because i thought you were going to drive me batty i did Oh, wait. You batty. <laughs> right. You do squeeze the toothpaste too very well, though. I'm really good with I it. I don't. In fact, everybody else okay. frustrates the hell out of me. <laughs> I don't even try to fix it, I think, because I know it bothers you. I think you do, too. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> anyway. Oh, I guess. I sorry, not say? sorry. <laughs> Something about fantasy, but I can't remember. Oh, um, nope, it's gone. Oh, well. Oh, well. We're going to do another whole episode on fantasy. When I, yeah, good. When I think about fantasy, I really do mean, like, removing it from the day-to-day. So, uh, well, now I remember what it was. It was that the fantasy allows me to, I mean, I guess it's what we call objectification kind of, it lets me not worry about their, the fullness of their, their personhood. And I get to, in my mind without, you know, affecting the person themselves, just look at those, those Those sort of pure features features that I'm feeling, finding compelled by and just. Yeah. So here's the thing. Not everybody's going to feel competent and capable to do this Mm -hmm. some people are going to say no way that that would drive me crazy i would just fixate um right if so if this this is definitely a choose your own adventure do not do this do not fantasize about someone if that is not generative for you um i have found that it can work for me in certain circumstances especially if i have other relationships that are working so there's the other thing Turn your attention to the place where your relationships are working. If this yeah. one needs to cool, mm. you know, there's we all have an, a bandwidth. We all have an amount of energy we can put out. I just turn the lion's share of that in other directions. And I find that, honestly, calming, like unfollowing people on social media is probably the key. Because their real person is a whole person with its upsides, downsides, and all the rest. And that's not what you see on but social not media. on social media. Mm. And that's pernicious and that you'll look at at 11 o'clock at night and then try to sleep and yep. so unfollow unfollow there's just no need like you don't even have to unfriend just unfollow do not read their stuff um there's just no need keep like there's just no need to p- torment yourself right. with that with and with the that idea that that they are one-sided because mm-hmm. social media is great i like it for a lot of things but for getting a full picture For of someone? For getting a full picture of a real Absolutely. human? Nope. Absolutely not. Okay. Well, I hope this was helpful for the person who had the question. And I really enjoyed this. And I think that there's a lot more to talk about yes. around what it is to fall in love. So we're going to do a future episode on new relationship energy and new sexual oh, energy. yeah. That'll And I think this good. will also, it'll mm-hmm. sort of play off of some of these ideas. Because that new stage is also the stage where we don't know where things are going to go. And you might at any point find yourself needing to manage the unrequited part. Right. Oof. Relationships. (laughs) They're messy. (laughs) They are. Okay, everybody. All right. Keep talking to each other. Thanks so much for tuning in 
to this episode, I've got one more thing I'd like to share with you. And that, you're just going to need to hop over to the website, listentojolie.com. There you can grab my top five relationship guides for free right now. Go get those guides. They're great. They're easy to implement conversations that will help you take action in creating the love you really want. It's my mission to make absolutely everything talk aboutable. She managed to help me be able to talk about stuff that I once couldn't even imagine saying out loud. Now I speak openly with my, my lovers, my friends, my family, and you um, on a podcast. Out loud relationship work really can change everything. That really is a wonder. One of my favorite things in the whole world. So when you're feeling the rough edges, when things aren't going the way that you'd hoped in your relationships, I want you to remember that relationships can be messy and that's good news.